introduce to you our keynote speaker for today. We have with us the eminent architect, Mr. Kamal Malik, founder and principal architect at Malik Architecture as our keynote speaker today. A name to be reckoned within the design fraternity. I'm sure he needs no introduction. He hails from the Kiskiw Hills of Shimla and to date, he draws immense inspiration from nature. His work and the way he explores connections between architecture, context, and ecology have captured many hearts and interests across the country. A veteran in the field of architecture, please join us to welcome the one and only Mr. Kamal Malik. I was informed about the topic conscious design vision. Um, I'll just wind back a little bit. She mentioned I come from the Himalayas, come from the mountains. My entire childhood was spent there. Two things happened there very early in my life. Because I'm here to share a journey with you. Please don't discount this issue of keynote speaker and so on and so forth. We have a common journey and I'm sharing my journey. And uh, <clears throat> one was a very well rounded off public school education. In a way, I mean that meant I would do compulsory horse riding, boxing, etc, etc, which actually public speaking, um, understanding Hemingway, which in a way prepared me for my interface with the outside world. Most of my time also was spent with my grandparents. My father was in the army, and so I had the privilege of being brought up by grandparents in an environment where constantly they were evolved people, sages who would come and stay at our house. So from an early childhood, I was also slowly made aware of an inner journey. Very early again, I didn't understand some things. As you grow older, you understand more and more. So, the centripetal and the centrifugal, the inner and the outer. In Sanskrit, there's a beautiful word called samyam, which means balance between the two. So, when I look at this word, conscious, I don't react immediately. Because I've always been taught that dive deep into everything. So, where does this word come from? It comes from a deeper word called consciousness. What is consciousness? I will only take a few minutes on this and get along with it. Now we go a few thousand years back. We wind the clock back. And so we can get the first click, please. Thank you. Sisters really did dive deep. In the Mandukya Upanishad, thousands of years ago, the sage is actually exploring this word in extreme depth. So, you have, we say that there is a waking state. All of us supposedly are in that state. We all know that there's a dream state where things surface. And then we have deep sleep, which is called Sushupti. The sage is telling his disciple, it's very interesting, that imagine, or in, in present day times, imagine there is a train moving between three stations. There is a station, 
which is the waking state. Imagine it's a station. Dream, deep sleep. Question, what is the dream? Who is the dream? That is how the subject of consciousness was explored. And then they came to the last state. If you see Turiya, Turiya simply in Sanskrit means the fault. People have called it Samadhi. People have called it many things. But this is the final frontier of consciousness. What is consciousness? I am, for me, as I said, I am blessed because this journey came upon me. I never undertook this journey. So it came upon me. And therefore, with this, and what represents consciousness? Nature. We are all parts of nature, but we are combating nature. We are an intrinsic aspect of nature. So, I will actually share with you, now that we have spoken about the centric beetle, and I don't want to bore people with this because we can go on with this for a couple of days, maybe months, maybe a lifetime, I don't know. Um, the, what? There's one more thought. <coughs> Something very vital happened when man stood up on two feet. Try and figure it out, but imagine from four went to two. What happened? People would say that hands got free, you became dexterous, you could do many things, but that's not the main thing that happened. Imagine an animal is broke on four. The head and the heart are exactly in the same level. Their response is to fight or flee. Stop. Very quick is the response where the blood flows direct. In the case of man, the heart is here, pumping, and the head is moved there. The brain is moved there. So man became capable these fine capillary vessels that carry blood to the brain actually made him capable of a tremendous amount. Consciousness again, moving. We have one trillion, we are made up of one trillion cells. And each of those cells has intelligence. Can you imagine what man is capable of? So, for me, I was simply trying to explore another dimension of consciousness. I think we can move on now. So now from the centripetal, let's move to the centrifugal. I thought I would share with you a few works which are seminal under just either moving through now or executed, but more importantly, for several decades, people have asked me, how come you never worked in Bangalore? How come you never worked in Karnataka? Sure enough, and I told you before that I, uh, this is a journey I'm sharing, and I'm a great storyteller, incidentally. Only thing is, the stories are factual. Um, one day we got a call from this gentleman saying that <coughs> I want a project done just outside of Hampi. What kind of a project? He then, on the Zoom call, said that he had almost concluded the project with Zaha Hadid. Then she passed away. So he was heartbroken. For what? I don't know. But it's his problem. He was heartbroken. And for two years he searched. Anyway, he stumbled upon a name he saw one or two projects, whatever it was, and he did a Zoom with Arjun and more with Arjun because I don't understand Zoom calls. So, um, and we got around to working with him. It's actually a very peculiar kind of project. It's a large, they're doing a 20 windmill project on complete sustainability. It's part wind turbine on a hill overlooking the Tungbhadra Dam, very close to Hampi, a place called Husband. 
And this is part of that project where they have to build the guest house. The family has a large collection of sculpture, of art. They're a very philanthropic family. So they wanted some parts of that project to be almost museum-like, etc., etc. The one thing that we told him is, the one discussion I had with him is, I don't want you to be disappointed because you have shifted away from Zara. I said, the Western world is very obsessed with form. Here in India, our search has been for the formless. They know the beads of the necklace, and we are searching for the invisible thread that ties the beads together. So as long as you're prepared for that journey, maybe we can work with each other. So the entire project is being built in granite, all 70,000 square foot of it, including pieces of granite, which are six meters long, weighing several tons. And we are only using a second material quick setting line, Juna, which our ancestors have used traditionally. Just two materials, no concrete, no steel, uh, very low carbon footprint. Of course, the rest of it, solar, water, sustainability, uh, geothermal, uh, using for you know, radiant, etc. These are now considered uh, absolutely imperative. So, um, quickly, I think limited time, not take more than two, three minutes to run by some of these semi projects, which actually are dealing with local materials, local craftsmen, resurrecting the artisan, listening to nature, talking with the sun, etc. Yes, please. Thank you. Here, a lot of 
the structures which are mainly in compression, the very nature of stone. We've actually been able to make models in our office by suspending weights and getting the exact shape of the catenaries. So the engineer has simply to come in and say, he has to take your architectural drawing, give you the thickness of the stone, and he's out of it. Because that's, the, the, that's how masonry is. So really, that's one of the things, especially for the youngsters, we are too reliant on engineers. I'm nothing against engineers, but we have too little knowledge of how structures behave. We simply are looking at form and then not able to understand how things work. So this is how, and there is a very nice example, why I've given that is, of the Sargadia Chapel, where, uh, in Barcelona, where almost 100 years ago, this chapel was designed, and then the University of New Zealand did a computer study on the forms that had been generated. And they found they completely typed something done manually with weights and something done generated for the computer, he had it perfect. Please, thanks. Yeah. To work with stone, we actually had a learning curve in Jaipur. To work with stone and chum, limestone. Uh, learning to walk before we started to run. So this is a smaller project, but again built with the same principles in stone. Yeah, please. I will not get into the details of planning, just a few images. But this was a learning curve for us. We also created very good team of artisans who could work with these six meter spans, the logistics involved, etc. So, okay, next. Uh, shifting here. Yeah, just a minute. Go back to last. Thank you. Um, we're doing a couple of projects in Bhutan now, both in the Grand Earth and Mojo. I'm simply covering those projects where we are actually working with materials close to the ground. This is my own house, uh, held up for COVID. Now, hopefully, we'll get the green signal. But Grand Earth literally means you're not bringing any material from outside except the local wood. You're just digging, whatever you're digging, excavating, is going in, rammed in, you know, and then used. Go on, please. Next. This is another project in Bhutan, again, rammed earth. It's an urban project, rammed earth and wood. Next. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, just, just. That's right. This one's at Baro, a hospitality project sitting on the river bank. It's an incredible site to the hill on one side. We, we use the game of Rand Earth and Wood. So we've kind of done a lot of research there. But the villagers are working a lot with this. They're building their own homes. So nothing great and brilliant about saying I will work with Rand Earth. They're, they're working in the villages, you see, and they have no architects which is actually a great discovery, you know. So we sometimes wonder, you know, uh, where architects were necessary at some point. Next. Go on. Okay. Uh, I think this is a, you have an AV. Yeah. Okay, this is a twin project. Two homes, our own home, and a friend's house just jumped to us. It's a stunning landscape, a stone fort of Shivaji. We live in its shadow and overlooking the lake.
very steep slopes which necessitated uh, the use of free flowing forms to connect the covered spaces between the steep slopes. So they were actually generated to that. And we have got composite metal and wood construction. You can see that. Or, and finally, we're doing something which is quite exciting in Mumbai, which is a dense urban jungle. It's a film archiving and, and conservation thing for celluloid. 